Hello everyone and welcome to the transactional session demo, in which we'll see how you can use this feature in your code. But before we go into the code, let's have a look at a sample. What we have here is a very simple orders endpoint. Whenever it receives create order command, a new row is inserted into a database and order created event gets published. What is sometimes taken for granted is that the deletion of the incoming message, inserting the row and publishing the event are a single unit of work. Unfortunately, in the world of modern messaging infrastructures, this is not the case. And Service Bus already covers exactly this scenario with the outbox. That said, the outbox comes with one crucial constraint. Your business logic always has to be triggered by a message. In many scenarios, this is indeed the case, but there are situations when you need to publish a message and make changes to your DB in some other context, for example, in a web controller. And this is where a transactional session comes in handy. It provides the very same unit of work which bundles DB and messaging operations outside of a handler, be it in a web controller triggered by HTTP request, a console app that publishes events, or a desktop application. Okay, but enough talking, let's have a look at the code. What we can see here is a very simple web application. It consists of a single send message controller that takes dependency on two types, my data context, which is entity framework data context, and I transactional session, a type that comes from transactional session package and is meant to be used for performing any messaging operations like send or publish. What the controller is doing when it gets HTTP get request is that first in line 25, it inserts a new row into the database and then in line 28, it does a send local, which in turn is handled by a dedicated handler here. Let me add a breakpoint in the handler and also in the controller. And let's hit F5 to see how that works in practice. First of all, we get a hit in the controller, which is just before we do a send local. And then we get into the handler itself, which is here. Let's have a quick uh, look at the database. When I uh, see what are the entries in the My Entities uh, table, we can see that there is a single row that has uh, the ID of 68BB. When we look at the browser, we can see that that's the same ID as the message that generated the initial call. Okay, so what is the magic behind all of that? First of all, uh, let's start with the basics. In order to use transactional session, you need a dependency on a package. In our case, we take a dependency on and service bus persistence SQL transactional session. We use SQL because we want to integrate with entity framework. There are other options available as well, such as Cosmos DB, Raven DB, MongoDB, anything which is supported by a particular platform. Secondly, we need uh, a couple of configuration lines. First of all, we need to enable transactional session uh, at the level of the persistence configuration. Secondly, we need to tie together the entity framework data context with connection and transaction, which is managed by transactional session uh, that we're using. And the way that we can do it is we can grab iSQL storage session from the container and then pass the connection and transaction to the entity framework data context. Last but not least, we need a very simple middleware which is a file there executing just before our HTTP controller. The way uh, it works is that first, it opens a new transactional session in line 17, then it executes the controller. And when that succeeds without a failure, it commits the session in line 21. Okay, so let me add a breakpoint here and let's see how that works when we run. Okay, so one more time we get a hit in the controller, but now before we get into the handler, we get a hit here in the middleware. And this is exactly the moment at which we decide whether the whole unit of work should be committed or whether it should be rolled back. Let me look uh, uh, at the database itself. Still, we have only a single row. And let's stop a process here just to uh, emulate a situation in which our process would fail at exact this moment. When I stop it, and when I go back to the database and execute the query one more time, we still have only a single row. So what we can see here is that uh, neither 
uh, inserting the rows into the database, nor sending the message operations were applied, and no visible side effects were uh, could be observed outside of the handler. Okay, and that's it for the demo. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you will enjoy using the new feature.